Cup finals and those sorts of things. So uh, no, it's really important that t today that the bats batsmen especially put their hand up and get the job done. Any changes to the team? No, we've got the same side coming into today's game, yeah. Play well, good luck. Thanks, man. Cheers. Graham, probably would have batted first if you'd won the top? No, actually, we, we probably would have gone a different way. Again, uh, I think it probably started a bit slow this morning and hopefully get better as the day goes on. It's a difficult ground to defend on. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can bowl well up front and, and really restrict them. It was, a, it was a cracker of a game on Friday. Pity you had to be a loser. But um, your team showed a lot of fight. You fought back about three times to get back in the game. Yeah, I think we played some really terrific cricket. I think emotionally the boys have taken a bit of, uh, bit of time to get over Friday night. It was a real emotional roller coaster. So we're looking forward to today. It's an awesome place to come play, especially when it's a full house. And, uh, you know, we've really played some fantastic cricket throughout this series. And I don't think we've really allowed them to play well. And we've concentrated on our own game, which has been great. So, yeah, we're looking forward to a big one. And any changes to the team? Yeah, unfortunately, Polly's not fit. He's got a, a strain in his back um, from the other night. And... Uh, uh, Johan van der Vat comes in for him. Then also it's a team game, but you know, individual brilliance can, can win this. Uh, 119 you got in the first game, Mackay got 6 for 22. So it'll be hoping one of your players can, can uh, individual brilliance to win the game and the series. Yeah, obviously. I mean, it's uh, one day cricket can be decided on one man. So, you know, but, uh, you know, the fortunate thing is we've got a squad of guys that can perform on a day and can win new games. So you're not relying on just one individual. So we're looking forward to today. As I say, hopefully we can bowl well up front and then chase well in the afternoon and hopefully there's a few more hundreds around for, for a few more of our guys. Very well. Good luck. Thanks. Cheers. Well, that's it. Should be another thriller here at the Wanderers. That's the news from the toss. Australian captain Ricky Ponting has won the toss and Australia will bat first. Well, the players are on their way out to the middle. 270, 280 was spoken about barriers at total. What do you reckon? I think it should be more. I think 300 is, is, is what somebody would feel very comfortable with. There's the Australian side. Unchanged. And uh, it's an unchanged side. And I think they'll be looking for a, a good start here. And I think, you know, obviously Gilchrist in the first 15 and Hussey in the last 15 is going to be two key areas that South Africa have got to target. Who is your money on, Barry? My money is securely in my back pocket. <laughs> Come I, on, make I, a call. I, I reckon what's going to happen here, it's going to be a top. I mean, it's going to be two and a half each. <laughs> that, would, that would certainly be an interesting finale to everything. That's for sure. So to all it is, we're at the Liberty Life Wanderers. There's a look at the South African team. And the man you need to look at there is Johan van der Vaart. He comes in because Sean Pollock is injured. They have to get up with Pollock not being there. We're ready for the action. The commentators are ready in their seats. They're chomping at the bit too. Let's go down to them. Two orders at the moment in the Standard Bank Series. Of course, this is the final at the Wanderers, and we are all very pumped up for this game. The South Africans are. They've been out there for a long time today. They're out there for some time before the Australians did, by the way. And, uh, of course, the Australians are very excited about the fact that they've come back from 2-0 down in the series. And now it is 2-all. Graham Smith, lots of pressure on him as the skipper in front of the home crowd. Capacity crowd expected at Liberty Life Wanderers. Some 32,000 people are going to be crammed in here today. Conditions are absolutely ideal for cricket. No rain expected. The ground staff have assured us of that. And the pitch is an absolute beauty. McCain Teddy, first ball. And it's a good one first up. There'll be some good carry here at the Wanderers. He's away. And he's timed that superbly. Well, he just said value for shot. You get it here at the Wanderers. It fairly flies off. Gilchrist will feel much more settled. Mackayantini had to pitch one up a little bit more. Just to see if there was any swing. And if there was any movement off the track further up. That's first prize, of course. Get the man forward. And as he, Gilchrist didn't really push forward a long way. Just a little prod. Made sure he middled the ball. That's away. That's his zone. Loves it on the offside. And he drives well through extra cover. That's over the top. Couple of bounces for. It's a big over for Australia. Just a bit short for McCain Teddy. Rounds off to 10 from the over. 23 for none. Straight drive for four. Beautifully played right along the dirt track. They don't come better than that. He was in the drive zone and he, he jumped all over it. But look at that. No running. Once he did it, just stood dead still. Straight again. Four again. Well, you can clearly see it's a good batting track. Ball comes on nicely. 
Good for driving. That is through, and that is four. It is the shorter boundary by, I reckon, around about 25 yards. Well, something's bothering him. I think it's the bat. He's not happy with it, but <laughs> my goodness. Why would you change it? Strain leg side and another boundary. McCain Tenney is a little bit all over the show right now. And you can't do that to a player of uh, the calibre of Adam Gilchrist. Well, I want to take McCain Tenney's side here. I think this field placing is putting under enormous pressure. He cannot bowl too straight. And therefore he errs wide outside off. That's away on the leg side. Shorter boundary again, and that's another boundary. So three boundaries in the last four balls between Andrew Hall and also McCain, TD. And uh, Kaditz has now moved to 18, Gilchrist on 28. And they're not going to miss out on anything. It's a little bit leg side. In fact, it's not. It's more like middle stump. It's still worked away. It's one of the strengths of these uh, two left-handed opening batsmen. Oh, that's a good shot. He's hit that uh, very hard indeed. I don't think it was through the hands of the short extra cover. It went all the way along the ground, I reckon. That's the uh, 50 partnership. Short delivery again and uh, pulled away. This is a fast outfield. It's four more. Well, the Australians couldn't have dreamed about a better start. They've managed to get a few boundaries away, despite the fact that early on they got uh, they were nailed to the crease a bit. This wasn't a flyer like first or second over flyer. This has been building. Yeah, another good uh, shot from Gilchrist again, straying a little bit in in uh, length. The Mackay and Tini just giving him enough opportunity to to play that favourite pull shot of his. Well, straight down the ground, and uh, that one will go for four as well. Uh, sixth boundary off from Tini. It's 65 for none. Oh, he's hit that in the air through the offside field. Bounces away down towards the boundary. If he's going to bowl those cutters to Gilchrist, I would suggest he needs a sweeper back. He may just get him caught out there somewhere. And there we go again. The sweeper would have cut that one off, and uh, that also is going for four. So he's got to come up with a plan now, Andrew Hall. This is what it's all about. Can't just keep bowling there to Gilchrist without protection. I reckon they should try around the wicket. I know it's a shorter boundary on the leg side, but if those cutters work, then you're hitting against that little bit of a cut that goes away to the offside. This way you're just sliding across the, uh, the off stump, giving Gilchrist plenty of room to swing the arms. And he's going to make you pay, and he is big time. 49 for Gilchrist, just 34 deliveries. Yes, he's, um, he's being damaging. Yes. And that's his single. Oh, there's a, a misfield there, but it won't cost South Africa anything. A half century to Gilchrist. That's his 44th half century. He's sixth against South Africa. And he's first of the series. And that's the wrong one. Outside uh, that off stunt. That's not the place to bowl. Slightly over pitched. And uh, hasn't Gilchrist got stuck into it? Recently. That's gone way up into the crowd. Well, Katic has been bogged down just a little bit. Gilchrist has been doing the attacking, but uh, he doesn't often settle for that. And this is an example, a superb cricket shot. In the commentary box now, Mike Hazeman, and uh, alongside him, Daryl Cullen. Outstanding shot, just outside the line of stump. The bigger boundary there. And obviously looking at uh, the bowling of Johan van der Butt so far, the first couple of overs. Good. That is absolutely remarkable. Andrew Hall has taken a blinder. He looked in no position whatsoever, stuck the hand down. The ball went straight in, and that is a huge wicket. Wow, what a catch. Great catch by Andrew Hall. He almost stuck it out as if to say, well, I've got to get something down on it. And it's stuck, and it's a crucial period of play here for South Africa. Just when Gilchrist was looking to launch, Andrew Hall pulls out this bit of brilliance. Well, we've said all along, a couple of us have said that fielding may just be the deciding factor between these two sides. And you need work like that if you're going to stay in this match.
97 now, the end of Gilchrist for 55. Australia have lost their first wicket, which brings Ricky Ponting, the captain, to the crease, playing in his 250th game in one international cricket for Australia. Slightly leg side, and there's no protection down there. So they finished that over in style. Ricky Ponting, I think, had another word or two as well in the middle of camera, just to put his point across. 114 for one. 19 overs gone, 114 for one. That run rate back to six per over. He's one of those quiet achievers, Simon Kadic. He's gone to 50 now, 51 after 60 balls. So that strike rate is very good for him of 85. Six fours and a magnificent shot for six. Yeah, we've spoken since the first game. Now there's uh, certainly plenty going on in the middle. Off camera, it's Smith and Ponting. Having plenty to say. That's away. That's where Ponting wants them. And that's gone for four. He will not miss out in that region. Bit of turn. That was beaten him. Nicely played by uh, Ricky Ponting. Using the pace, just going with the turn. Unlucky. Got out like that in Durban. This time he's had a bit of luck. Well, could that be a defining moment in the day? And you're just bleeding for a wicket. Outside edge, genuine neck. And he's put that one away too. Just straying down the leg side. He plays the pull shot so well, Ricky Ponting. Just rides with it. Anything on the leg side, he's dynamite. Well, Mark Boucher came up to the stumps and immediately Roger Telemachus had to come straighter outside all stump. He'd have a thrash at it. If he got an edge, it wouldn't matter. So Telemachus comes straight and Ponting puts it away. There's a man on the extra cover fence. Oh! And he's flipped that one over the top to again a leg side boundary. One short, one up. Doesn't matter to Ricky Ponting. More runs, four, short boundary. He hasn't had much of a strike since Ponting came in, uh, Simon Kadic. But he's got that on the way for four. 150 up, just one wicket down. Oh, and that was premeditated. Smashed away. Simon Kadic has decided that uh, blocking's not the order of the day. They want to get as many as they can down the wicket. You don't often see that to uh, Jean Collis. Well, that shows what a good deck it is, and he's got confidence to go down. Maybe you're being a little bit harsh. Oh, he's gambled. I think he's picked that slower ball from Jean Collis. And he's gone after the short boundary, and that's 20 rows back. Was it the slower delivery? I'm not sure it was. Did he roll the fingers? What do you think? Yeah, I think he picked it. I think there's something. You know, they, there's so much video analysis these days that there's some change in the action for Jacques Cullis before he arrives at the crease, and, and Ponting and the uh, rest of the Australians have picked that up. It's gone again. And another one. Just drifting into the pads. This is going to cost them big time. Ricky Ponting, 100 in the uh, World Cup final a few years ago, and now he's gone to 50. That's where you can't bowl. That's three of them. All in the same area, all to the same type of delivery. so easy with so much time off the front foot the picker got to have such quick quick hands pick the ball early you just can't afford to bowl at the stumps it's got to be a foot wide That's much better. This is a bit more luck involved in this one. He's spliced it over, but it's still gone for four. It's such a short boundary. That's unlucky for the bowler. 
He's decided he's going to go after them punting. There's no holding back here. Yeah, he sliced it. There was enough on the ball. He bounced away on the hard ground. But again, you see, he just drops his head away on the drive through the offside. And fortune favours the Braves. Well, just to give you an indication, uh, Patrick, 40 runs of the 50 came on the uh, onside, just 10 on the offside. It just shows you the sort of line that you've got to bowl to Ponting. And that one, he's hit in the air. And again, picked out the gap. He's on a mission, Ricky Ponting, on a big mission. And that's to beat Graham Smith into submission. Oh, he's got hold of that one, and one bounce into the crowd. This is uh, not a great time to be brought into the attack, because absolutely anything could happen. There's no way they're going to be playing themselves in. Have a look at that, from outside off stump. And oh, that's down the ground. It's going to go all the way. Don't worry about trying to catch that one. It just kept going. Three or four rows back, but enough. This is a great shot from Ricky Ponting. He had a very quiet start, and then all of a sudden he broke loose. Kai and Tini straight back into things. It's right up there. I'm just showing us, and uh, he can take on the straight boundary as well. And Ponting's on 76 or 52 deliveries. Incredible. Katic is in the air. This is good. This is out. Yes, got a third man. Actually, pretty well played by Katic. He obviously intended to get it down to third man. He hit it right off the middle of the bat, and it's gone straight to Telemachus. You might have thought for a moment that he was looking to get it a bit finer. Played it too well in the end. The extra pace and bounce from Makai Antini. He can this and give South Africa a chance to somehow subdue these Australian batsmen. A well played innings from Kadic. Australia now 216 for two. Well, there's been a bit of a change. Uh, Martin was down to come in after Ponting, but the uh, uh, decision's been made by the Australian cap, the captain, I assume, to uh, to send in Hussey. This is the dismissal again. Straight to Telemarkus. Oh, Ponting is having a go, and that's gone through the field as well. Boy, this is lightning. This outfield is unbelievable. Another one. Well, Ponting definitely has decided that almost everything's got to go. He looks to me as if he's after the world record here. Yeah, 400. Nice four. And Scott through the field. And there's another very good timer of ball down the other end in uh, Hussey. He's only just arrived at the crease. And uh, he really only lent on that one. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Well, he has a batsman who's only just arrived at the crease, and you, you just wonder where he's been. Why hasn't he been playing one-day internationals and test cricket? God makes it so much better, this shot, is that that is not a big gap. He's threaded it to perfection. Bang! Goodness me, that is huge! That has gone out of the ground! Maybe on the lunch table in that block of flats. Well, I said he was searching for the boundary. What he's searching for is the block of flats beyond it. That's a monster. Just misses that. And probably hit it over that. Yeah, Callis, you see there, strays onto the stumps, and that's where you cannot bowl with a short boundary to Ricky Ponty. Another six. Round the wicket, Jock. Round the wicket. Advancing, Callis saw him coming, and that is a great shot. That is a very good shot indeed. Saw him coming, dropped it short, he backed away, gave himself width, and slapped it for four. That's a sign of a really good player in touch with his game. Down the wicket, Callis saw him coming, and he's still able to get it away square of the wicket to the short boundary. They've managed to get a boundary every over. It's putting so much pressure on the bowlers. track this time and into the crowd that is a great shot from Mike Hussey 
How do you stop this freight train? 34s, seven sixes. Amazing. Short this time, and again, it's been dispatched easily for four. Lovely control from Hussey. I'm oh, just wondering, just projecting the game ahead. Beautiful batting. 4-6-4. Four, four. No answer. What's South Africa going to have to do when they come out? I mean, they're going to have to review their batting order. They cannot afford to have a dip in our top innings. I mean, it'll only get them at best to 270, and it's going to be much uh, more than that. So they're going to have to revise their batting order, South Africa. They have to think about it right now. Full toss. Just the one this time. And Callis will be happy that over's finished. 16 from it, 274 for two. Well, the clapping's because uh, Ricky Ponting is on 99 with just 70 deliveries. Magnificent. Yeah, he likes this ground. Once one. Shot from Mark Boucher. Ricky Ponting has got three figures. It has not been referred. Magnificent stuff from Ricky Ponting. Absolutely outstanding. What a remarkable player. That's his 20th 100. His teammates love that. Adam Gilchrist on his feet and applauding. Everyone else there as well. It's been a treat. It certainly has. And out the blocks was Mike Hussey because he realised how important it was for the skipper. This in the uh, deciding game. Skipper leading from the front. Short and wide and gets the treatment. Advancing. And four more. Goodness me, that's a boundary off the first for the over. Johan van der Vaart is uh, starting to get some serious treatment here. Those figures are not looking very respectful these days. And uh, I guess he's got a few mates with him. Loves driving through that region. Three extra cover and he's got himself four. He rarely misses out. And that sort of opportunity, Mike Hussey. Just eases it through, doesn't he? I think the beauty about Mike Hussey is the, is the ability to get his weight to go into the shot. Watch how he leans right forward into the shot. Head right over the ball. And that's why he hits it through the offside so well. Look at that leaning right through. Make sure the weight goes into the shot. Now that's uh, gone away for four. It's been given run, so there must have been uh, a bit of willow there. Top edge, which is a little bit dangerous for Mark Boucher. You're not kidding. That's a wicket keeper killer. 50 for Hussey. In no time at all, 33 deliveries. Seven fours, one six. Cries of catch at. But no one there. A boundary to finish the over. Turns that into a big one. 11 runs on that as well. 41 overs gone. 312 for two it is now. Remarkable stuff. Six. Callis thought he was in the game at one stage. Not to be. He would have been if he'd been 20 rows back. No catch by the spectators. And just another six. The eighth in this innings. 63 now for Mike Hussey off just 38 balls, eight fours and two sixes. And the full toss was just dispatched. There'll be a few that reckon... Uh... Oh, there we go again. I mean, they really are picking the gaps beautifully. What a position to be in, though. Oh, he's hit that one, and that's gonna... It's gone as flat as attack for six. Well, Ricky Ponting is uh, certainly enjoying himself out there. I mean, two down they were in this series. Uh, this is a different looking side totally. Lots of intensity from Ricky Ponting, even though he's in a wonderful position. Just since he's, he's looking at bigger things here. Oh, that's six. That's straight. That's going straight over the top of the side screen. Oh! 
That's a great box down there, but they were, they were scattering all over the place. The best box in the house, straight down over the top of the Standard Bank sign at the far end, and Ricky Ponting has hit the ball straight into it. Well, he's heaved that one down the ground. Now, let's just see if we can pick this ball coming down over the top of the screen. Here it comes. And uh, there they go. Oh, that's six as well. He's worked that away on the onside. It's a question of getting underneath the ball. Anything you can get underneath, the way these guys are playing, is going to disappear into the crowd. Oh, not like that. That's six as well. That's gone way over the top of mid-on. Now, that's an example of exactly what you don't want to do. I mean, that's the length that says, take it. So much power. It's the length you spoke about. It's happy hour. It's been happy hour for a little while now. Here's a full toss, and uh, it's in the air. This will be out court. Yes, at last. Hussey trying to hit a full toss down the ground. You heard Pat Simcock saying, you're better off over-pitching than under-pitching. Hussey didn't quite get that one in the middle of the bat. Uh, it's gone down the ground, and Mackay and Tini's taken the catch. Nice and easy from Mackay. Fifty-one balls. Just have a look at that. Eighty-one runs at a strike rate of 158. Well, you've got to go a long way to beat that. 374 for three now. And uh, the man striding out of the centre now is uh, probably the hardest striker of a cricket ball in world cricket. Well, it's a full toss. It's going over the top. Will it go the other way? Yes, it is. All the way. That's the direction he loves. Uh, he really does heave them in that, uh, in that, into that corner, does Ponting. Well, he's now reached his 150, 154 to Ponting of 99 deliveries. Flays that one through the offside again. No ball called as well. Uh, there you go, another no ball. Well, Simons is not going to waste any time, so a no ball four. In fact, this over so far, two no ball fours. Oh, that's it. Take that. Another no ball. And it's gone all the way as well. Well, this is turning out to be, this over is turning out to be a nightmare for him. Not only is it a no ball, he's in it for six as well. And uh, the highest team total in one day international cricket. It's the first time any side has got to 400. This is the sort of thing this Australian team will enjoy. Oh, and that one's disappeared as well. Another four. That's 22. 22 of this over and only three balls, three legitimate balls have been bowled. Well, how many in this over already? Too many. Oh, he's hit that way over the top as well. And he's got him. No, he's got him. That's a great catch. That's a wonderful catch by Dipinar. Well, this is as good a catch as you see in circumstances like this. He had the rope right at his heels. It was as flat as a tack. The ball would have gone at least five meters over the boundary. And uh, it has been brilliantly caught and brings to the end what is one of the most brilliant knocks ever seen here, I feel certain. But Dipinar had to judge it well. His state just inside the rope but Ricky Ponting leaves the stadium the Wanderers Bull Ring have played an innings that will be remembered by everyone here for many a year a standing ovation well played Ricky Ponting 407 for four yeah. so Brett Lee uh, coming out to see if he can uh, brute force a few 
Well, that's an inside edge along the ground for four. Well, when it goes wrong, it really goes wrong. One-handed is another no ball. This is getting out of hand. It's gone for four as well. Well, I don't know what uh, Telemachus is doing. Having done so well in Durban and having been so uh, disciplined, I just don't understand this. Another fumble down there and another run. And uh, I think he's home. He's taken the bars off, but uh, he's going he's gonna to refer it. But I've got to say, I thought he was home. Yeah, I think that Mark Boucher thought so as well. Just a little delay here. And, uh, took the bales off, but uh, when he took the bales off and he had a little an appeal, then he walked around. I think he, he, he could see he was right there. The yeah, Boucher asking the question uh, very positively because he actually was facing the other direction. Uh, it was a reluctant referral by the umpire. I think he, he knew it was not out. Last ball of the innings. Brett Lee has smashed it away down towards square leg. Kemp uh, hovers down there, but then pauses. In comes his throw. And that is the end of the innings. A wonderful batting performance by the Australians. Of that, there is no doubt a world record batting performance. And uh, from a South African bowling point of view, they'll be very, very pleased it's over. It's uh, almost a taken, or a given, as they say. There is the uh, performance of Australia, a wonderful performance. Ponting, the top scorer, won 164 of 105 balls. And um, well, who would have thought that we would have had a world record score made at the Wanderers here today? So uh, there it is, 434 for four off the 50 overs bowl. Right, and that's uh, the bad news, I'm afraid, <laughs> for all the bowlers. Well, uh, we'll be back to watch the South African run chase in uh, a little while. OK, here we go. Smith on strike. An enormous total to chase down. And he's got someone about 150 screaming in. Oh, that'll be a, a bit of a help. Big roar from the crowd here. Capacity crowd, 32,000 people. And South Africa open their account. Lost a wicket early, Nathan Bracken did the business in Durban and he started by getting Dippin' out today. A bit of fortune to go with it there. Inside edge, Dippin' are looking to get it down to third man. It's a fairly foolish delivery. And he'll count himself very unlucky on this sort of pitch to get out in that fashion. Well, you know, the hero out of the Durban innings, he has to leave. But Dippin' are gone for one. So have a now, three for one. Herschel Gibbs has arrived, taking guard. Nathan Bracken has struck in his first over. Gibbs, very experienced these days, 185 games. Average a little bit lower than what it should be for someone of his ability. But he has got 1500s. That's an important stat to remember. Graham Smith. If they get off, there might be a chance. That's good. That's four. another boundary back to back boundaries now for Graham Smith eight runs off the first two balls that's away and four driving on the up beautiful shot from Gibbs inside edge not far away from the stumps and he'll take that down the track and just over the top of Michael Clark and that's four well, it wasn't going to take too much longer. Herschel Gibbs, 13 from 14 right now. And that strike rate's going to have to be somewhere up 100. He's got to keep it going right up there. Gone again. And four more back-to-back -back boundaries for Gibbs. It's a good shot from Herschel Gibbs. He's got that away beautifully, nice and flat for six. So there's a six off the first ball of the over. Brett Lee is bowling some pretty tidy pace, 145.5 k's per hour, and Gibbs is looking to play some strokes. Nice position for that. And into the stand on the short boundary. Right, so uh, 47 for one. 
And Gibbs on 24 of 25. Smith gets it away. That'll go to the boundary for four as well. That's well played. Right. Now we need the South African captain to come to the party. He's got 20 of 12, so he's going pretty well. They just need to keep these boundaries coming. Oh, that's uh, a magnificent shot. It's gone through the fingers there of the, shot, the close fieldsman. It was hit so well, it's gone to the boundary for four. 57 for one. That's what played. That's beautifully played. Steered to the boundary for four. Well played. That's the area he loves. Don't pitch it up without a deep mid-wicket. Smith's uh, going well because he'll dispatch it in that area. Oh, he's got it away. That's four. Take that. Short delivery. And it got the treatment it deserved. Oh, well played. That's four. Left-handers love you to pitch it outside that leg stump without a fine leg. They only allowed one back on that side. They've got one back on each side. They've uh, got a third man, and their man on the leg side is dead square. Well, we'll keep an eye on what the uh, comparison was after 10 overs, after 50 and after 20. South Africa ahead at the moment. Oh, good shot. He's hit that one over the top. Bouncing away down to the boundary. Well, he knew exactly what was needed this over. It's uh, spoiled it a bit for Lewis. 89 for one. Straight down the ground, and it's beaten him. It's four. Well, there's the boundary for this over. That's seven off the over. 25 runs ahead at this stage, South Africa. Just 46 deliveries. Brilliant. Muscled to bring up 50. Well played, Graham Smith. That's a fine reply. And a deserving applause from his home crowd. Well played, four runs. Very good placement. It's a full toss. He's edged it and he's got himself another boundary. Goodness me, this is quite remarkable. Four runs, beautifully played. That is a very good shot indeed. That's what they need to do. It's a situation where a few balls are bowled, the pressure builds up, they need a boundary, they look for it and they get it. Well played, 145 for one. It's a good shot. One bounce four. Open the blade perfectly. Herschel Gibbs. He didn't move. He knew that was going. That's a fine stroke. He's hit that beautifully and that's gone. A long way back for half a dozen. Not five rows, not ten, not twenty. More than that. Almost right out the ground. Way, way back. Simons bowled the slower ball. Smith waited for it. And bang. There he goes again. And he's too big a man not to get it out of the park. Graham Smith is going to play an innings which will be equal to Ricky Ponting's. 85 or 50 deliveries. Here we go. I think it's fast in your seatbelts, Tom. Yes, it sure is. It's such a great pitch. You can hit through it with all confidence. And up beyond the high felt, the ball travels a long way. And after shots like that, there certainly will be another one out the park. I don't know what the record number of sixes is in a one-day game, but this will be pretty close. 190 for one.
Now he's at the turning point. Look at the delight on Michael Clark's face and more importantly, Michael Hussey's. He really thinks that might be a big wicket and it certainly might be just not getting onto it, Graham Smith. And he's gone unlucky. Well, I think this was what that debate was about. Clark going around the wicket, asking Smith to come and fetch it out. So stump. Smith favours the leg side. This time, though, not quite getting all of it, dragging it straight to that man. Well, the captain hasn't stood back. Not the greatest day in the field, but superb with the bat. So there we go, 190 for two. In the air and out the park. What a response after a wicket. They crossed, so uh, Gibbs facing, he goes to 90. Looking at the toe of his bat, that's how good the bats are today. Michael Clark, Rice Smile. I'll keep talking about the sixes, Barry Richards. That's 19 now. There he goes. The power play got him up. I'm going to go over the top. Enough of this, he says. Well, Usha Gibbs isn't going to change his game. Maybe near a milestone. I have to agree with him. And this is the way to go. If the opportunity presents itself, you can't let that stand in the way of what the team needs. Brilliant shot. It's it's on. And he's done it so well today already. 97 now to Gibbs. And if he does go to 100, this crowd will erupt. About one ball from now. Maybe two. There it is. Just one, 16 ODI hundreds for Herschel Gibbs, but his job's not over yet. It's far from over, but for now, they're going to celebrate with him. A superb innings. When it's needed most by his side, he's come to the party. Look at that, 79 balls, a brilliant strike rate. And isn't it good to see Herschel Gibbs in form? There he goes again. More runs. Stand and deliver. That's a home run over third base. Brilliant strike from Usher Gibbs. That's not all that short off the front foot. He's ironing out that area. Like that. More runs. Gilchrist has got to stand up to the stumps. He will not do it and his bowlers have paid the penalty. He's got to get up because they're using their feet to get out there. They're creating a different length. They've got to pull them back. Look where Herschel Gibbs is. He's right out of his crease. Don't know what they're doing. They're not thinking clearly, the Aussies. And you can understand why. There's pressure from the South African batsmen. The crowd's not happy. It's again Ponting having a chat to Lewis. again he's selected his area and that's on the offside as much as Ricky Ponting puts it through mid-wicket so Herschel Gibbs puts it through cover here we go again that's the arrow he said he was going for you can't protect it up in the ring because he just goes up and over you've got to make sure that it's in the block hole otherwise you pay big time and that's down to third man. That's four more. What an over this has been. 242 for two. In the air, and he, oh, he's dropped it. He's dropped it. Oh, could he have dropped the trophy? Is it the case of this time it's the other way around? Could Bracken have dropped the cup, so to speak? Listen to the cheers in the background. Well, full toss miss hit straight to him as easy as you can get in these kind of games. If you were Gibbs, you'd have to walk down and say it to him, wouldn't you? You better believe it. <laughs> you'd have to have gone down there and said it to him. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. Straight down the ground, 
And that seriously relieves the pressure. 2.53 for two. Right, well, uh, there it is. Callus Kemp Boucher. All very capable. No Pollock, but um, Callus Kemp and Boucher, they're all capable of uh, keeping the momentum going here. 182 needed off 132 balls. The power play is now over, so the field can spread out. And that makes it just a little harder to get boundaries. Oh, good shot. Very good shot. He gave him a bit of room there. Take that. Gibbs has blasted that away to the point boundary. He moves to 136 off 95 balls. What an innings he's playing here. An innings of a lifetime. There we go. It's the way on the onside. Will it beat the field? Yes, it has. That's four as well. Martin diving away. Didn't quite get there. Oh, boy. When you start to see the fast bowlers jabbering away, then you know things are starting to change. Well, it looked like a Sydney Harbour Bridge there, the way he dived over that. I've got to tell you, Tony, that's where you live. Look at that. Oh, what's going on? Oh, he's hit that one beautifully. One bounce, I think, for four. Superb shot. Over cover. That's, the one. that's exactly what he's got to do. Stay put on leg stump or middle of the leg. If it's out there, pick his gap. Hit it over the head of the infielder. Well, we'll find leg up in the circle. The bowler cannot go too straight. So he really, you more or less know he's going to go off stump just outside. And again, oh, that's gone. That's gone. That's gone way, way up. A huge six. Well, who would believe what is happening here? The most sixes in a match is 21, and they've now got to 21. And Gibbs has gone to 150. What a stroke. Fetch that. Oh, boy. What a shot. Perhaps it wasn't the message. <laughs> That's an unbelievable shot. <laughs> what can you say? hit that it's in the air this is going to be caught will it be caught yes he's gone that's the end of de Villiers going for the big one I think it's the right bloke to be going for them de Villiers going for the big one at mid on and uh, again nicely taken on the boundary never easy when the rope is nearby no not at all he just didn't get hold of him too high he did well steady himself and then just have a look to see he was inside the clock it's good but uh, Nathan Bracken gets a wicket. So De Villiers goes for 14, 284 for three. And so um, Callis, a man of immense experience, 231 matches. Have a look at all those runs, an average of 44, plenty of centuries. Uh, the good thing about this is that uh, Callis should uh, know exactly what's required. Here's the dismissal again. it was a good catch that's in the air and there's a fieldsman down there but it's gone all the way well there's no doubt that uh, what you're saying is the way he's going to play it I'm still not sure that it's the right way to go though well you just keep watching <laughs> and he'll keep middling it hopefully that's one heck of a shot well that six makes it the most sixes in any one day international ever right Simons to him again, and again, oh, that's a bigger six. That was a rankful toss. It's a question of help yourself at the moment. Yeah, the buffet ball. This has got out of hand now for Ricky Ponting. You look around the ground, but that shot, well, I reckon a couple of Thailanders got hit that. In the air, and that's it. Well, I'm afraid to say, that section of the party has come to an end. He's hit two sixes. He did what you thought he would do. He did. Uh, I really think that he should have. Uh, he should have hung in there a little bit. However, 
That doesn't detract from one of the great innings of all time. He's wandering off this ground, having been caught by Lee off the bowling of Simons for 175. That was a superb performance. Well played, Hershey. As good as innings as anyone has seen here. He goes for 175. And 2.99 for four now into that famous tunnel. Hundred and thirty six to win from eighteen point one. Well squeezed away. Yeah, squeezed it away. Sorry, Michael. We're all getting excited in the box here. <laughs> we just can't, can't get enough of these boundaries. Every time we look up the ball's disappearing. And that's not what Ricky Ponting wants to see. Jack Cullis underway. Six balls he's faced, he's got ten runs. Great catch. Brilliant catch. Andrew Simons is an outstanding fielder. Effortless and taking that return catch, the end of Callis. Yeah, very good catch. He was ready for it because he's throwing the ball up. He knows there's every chance the batsman won't uh, be able to get right to the pitch of it. A lot slower, Jacques Callis looking to go over the top. And Andrew Simons has snaffled it. And that uh, brings it back to an even keel. Jacques Callis, the number one batsman in the world. He's gone. 327 for five. The game's on. Big round of applause now for Justin Kemp. He has a reputation, Kemp. This is uh, just about the time he likes to come out and bat and likes to hit the ball straight, high and long. It's in the air and it's going to go to the boundary for four. They needed that desperately. It's been a while. That makes it the most fours in a match now. The records are tumbling all over the place. In this match, and uh, the South Africans desperately needed it. The boundaries have dried up. In the air, out. What in? Big wicket. Kemp has trapped it straight to backward point. A slowish, really cutter comes spinner from uh, the left-handed Bracken, and he's got his man. The real danger at this stage, uh, there'd certainly be some that would say was Kemp, but uh, it's not going to be. This is the wicket again. Yeah, this is good bowling from Bracken. Kemp eyeing out that extra cover region. And in the end, only spooning it. The lack of pace being his undoing. And that was well taken as well by uh, Damien Martin at backward point. 3.55 now for six. So Fanavad is the new batsman. An average of 15. We know he can hit it. Straight down the ground, that's going for six, that's gone, yes, that's gone for six. That relieves the pressure a little bit and doubles the pressure on the bowler. Well, I was just going to say, so they've got to win it. You can't accuse them of choking. It's been a brilliant performance from them. They were so superb up front. Now, I'm going to say, there were three or four overs from front of up. Oh, he's hit that one magnificently. What a shot, it's gone all the way for six. That is an outstanding shot. 16 off the over, unbelievable. 374 for six. trying to get a fingertip on that one at mid-wicket. There it goes. And all the way to the boundary. Straight in the slot for Van Abak. Straight down the ground. What a shot. All the way into the crowd. An unbelievable straight six. Well... I think the Aussies thought just for a little while there that uh, certainly with Bracken they've got him nailed. But the man in your picture now, Fanavad, has come out and you don't get better straight hits than that one. Brilliant shot. Oh, he's got him, he's got him. But 
perhaps that's not the case. A flat bat from Van der has gone to Ponting, who's been off the ground getting some attention to his finger, and he's caught a little rocket. It's come at him like a bullet. He's got beautifully into position, taken the catch, and, uh, well, that might alter it. It'll certainly put the skids under the South Africans just a little bit. Yeah, this is a great catch. I can tell you about many fielders. This sort of situation won't want the ball anywhere near them. Not Ricky Ponting. That's a good pressure catch. And that is a fine little innings. Jan van der Vaart, crowd appreciate it. 35 of 18. 399 now for seven. A roar goes up as Telemachus strides onto the ground. They weren't exactly roaring when he was bowling. This place was as quiet as a mouse. Sweep shot, four, great shot, wonderful shot. Well, he's obviously decided whatever that was, he was going to sweep it. That has taken the pressure off. They needed a boundary there. Telemachus decided to sweep. Probably the first time he's ever played this shot. Have a look at this from outside off stuff. It's a beauty. Man, if you had asked him to play this again, he'd probably miss it. I reckon he was thinking like a bowler, anticipating that Bracken was going to go full and straight. Smashed away the mid-wicket. It's going to go for four. Yes, it's hit the boundary. Gacha is playing an unbelievable knot. He's done this so often. 35. Slightly over-pitched, and he's whacked it to mid-wicket. 35 he's got, or 35 deliveries. Works it away on the onside, it's another four. Bracken's chasing, he won't get there. The noise in the stadium is unbelievable. Every shot has been cheered with a standing ovation. He's hit it, he's hit it like a rocket. What a shot. Boy, is he strong. It's gone for four to extra cover. Lewis has taken a terrible tumbling. They're on their feet, the South Africans. Absolutely everywhere. The flags are flying here at the bull ring. Spare a thought for the bowler. He has disappeared to every corner of the Wanderers. You have to question Ricky Ponting continuing with him. in the air this is going to be out surely no it's going to be short oh it's a great catch wonderfully taken well Hussey is an unbelievable fieldsman he has taken that beautifully had it come in miles it's the very thing the South Africans didn't want to see happen was a wicket to go down because now they get into a situation where there's just a possibility they'll get bowled out look at Hussey go inches off the ground brilliantly taken well, what a game. Four twenty three fight. Well, one of them is Andrew Hall coming out just where you want to make sure they get in the nets and have their fair share. <laughs> Well, he wanted a man for a crisis situation, or a tough one. Get back Andrew Hall any day. He's done it so many times at provincial level and for South Africa. I think he's just the perfect guy right now for Boucher. He's literally run a ball somewhere along the line in those 10 deliveries. So I think it should pick up the boundary. And Roger Telemachus, maybe it wasn't quite on, but he couldn't hold himself back. Great catch. Final leg is up. So don't stray down the leg side, Brett Lee. Cover, mid-wicket, backward point. It's the only sweepers. Square and straight. And third man. You're right. Fine leg is wide open. Boucher gets it down to fine leg. He's got four. He's hit it. Oh, it's hit Brett Lee on the shin. Just a single. Boy. That uh, could quite easily have gone rocketing away down the ground. And that's hit him square on the shin, too. He, he hit it so well 
I think it went rocket, rocketing into as it is Shinoi's ankle. He'll take time out here, that's for sure. Well, let's just uh, bear in mind there's a test match uh, series coming up as well. That was on the foot. i have got to say, thankfully, for his sake, anywhere near the ankle, it could have been a lot worse. Well, on the shin, even. We well, did well. I mean, he actually stuck his foot out uh, to stop that. So, I mean, that really, you've got to give him some credit for that. Yeah, it was a certain boundary. I mean, Boucher hit it powerfully. Muron and Middle for Middle's particularly wide. Muron's a bit straighter than normal, but still would have thought that that would have been a boundary. Here we are in the last over. We've got six runs required or five balls. We're in uh, we're in a packed stadium in Johannesburg. We've got Brett Lee, one of the fastest bowlers in the world. We've got eight wickets down. If they lose a wicket, we'll be down to the. Uh, the ninth and therefore they just need to get another one Gilchrist is uh, trying to help Ponting a little bit uh, just trying to get one or two of them in the right place they've now pushed fine leg back down to the boundary for Hall so fine leg and third man are in position here he goes what can Andrew Hall do oh it's a great shot he's got it away for four over the top of Rowan down to the boundary for four now South Africa should definitely win. What a brilliant day's cricket. We keep saying it. We'll have to watch this many, many times over. Man for the pressure situation. Still, he's picked his gap. And now Ponting's got no option but to bring those fielders in. He's got to take the gamble. He's got to ask Hall to try and do that again. Surely, the two to win. It's a matter of bat on ball, run hard, and that should be enough. Who would ever have thought that Australia would lose a match defending 434? And Boucher, he's down the wicket to have a chat to Hall. Let's maybe for a moment consider that idea. Not to lose the chokers. <laughs> well, I think it's fair enough. They'll be looking for one. I'm sure that's what Boucher said. Block and run. Oh, he's had a go. He's out. Oh, he's out. That's the last thing they wanted. He's out. This match is not over yet. There's a little bit of a twist here. There's no way in the world that they could have crossed in time. So the last batsman in is going to have to face the music here. And so there is still a chance that the Australians could sneak in. Here's the shot. He didn't. I'm sure that wasn't the plan. The plan was surely a single. It had to be. It had to be a question of just getting bat onto it. Maybe as it left the hand, Hall thought, well, that's in the slot. Maybe I can get away with it. 4.33 for nine. Well, the big thing, yeah, is that Boucher hasn't got on strike. Number 11, Mackay and Tinney's got to face the music. Two from three. Right, well, two to get, three balls. One for a tie, so they've got to secure the tie and then win after that. So, they've got to go for a single here. Oh, he's got a single. He's got it to third man. Right, now then. They need one of two balls. South Africa cannot lose. They have tied the match right here. Now it's a question of winning it. The biggest shot in Mackay and Tinney's life. The little nudge down to third man for one. And they deserve that. What a brilliant performance. OK, Mark Boucher, he deserves this moment of glory. It's been a great knock under pressure. And you've got to say, Tony, you've got to back him to pull it off. Yeah, well, he doesn't, he doesn't want to go and do anything silly. I mean, all he needs is a single here. Uh, they don't want to run out. superb victory well I've been around the world watching this game look at tears they are crying out there the South Africans are charging out onto the onto the ground Gilchrist shakes hands with Boucher Ntini's on a high Ponting cannot believe this has happened to his team
The South Africans at the bull ring today have seen the best one day international ever played. Well, we won't question Tony Craig. He's seen many. And what a great result here for South Africa. Mackay and Tini gave bow to the strike. And that's been a long time coming. So much said of late about the South African side under pressure. They backed themselves. They had no choice but to go for it. And they pulled off one of the great victories of all time. And they deserve that celebration. But all credit to both sides. It's been a fantastic, fantastic watch, uh, match to watch. Can you believe it? Ricky Ponting, 434. He won't want that step behind his name. Losing captain. We'll see a celebration which we haven't seen from a serving side for a long time. Brings back memories of the 99 World Cup. One to win. And Australia pulled that off. But today, it's been South Africa's day. Yes, you're dead right. And out in the centre there, uh, to do it right at the end of Dalian. And the Can you believe it? <laughs> and uh, Pollock, who hadn't played in this game, is out there... Uh, really congratulating everyone well he'll never forget this one nor should he ever forget it look at the smiling face what a team man he is sean pollard and andrew hall saying mate sorry to let you in but uh, thanks for doing it that is the performance of the south african batsman Dippenar out early, Smith played superbly, Gibbs played the best innings he's ever played in one day international cricket. And the rest of them kept the pressure coming, they kept the runs ticking over. And Boucher then came in and finished it off with some seriously good help from Vandavar in particular. And uh, those partnerships at the top end really set the scene. Smith and Gibbs needed to get them to uh, a decent position so that they could keep things going. Tactically, with a bat, the South Africans were superb. These do not make good reading. It's not often that bowlers uh, get carted around to the extent they have, and I'm not just talking about the Australians, both sides uh, had their bowlers cleaned up. But uh, the uh, worst figures ever, no wicket for 113 there, now secured by Lewis, the Australian. And as uh, the summary, well, there it is. They scored 434, batting first, having won the toss, and they actually lost the match. South Africa fought back right down to the wire. Second last ball, the match was won. Not from now.